All right, 2.2, estimating instantaneous rates of change from tables of values and equations. The instantaneous rate of change is the exact rate of change of a function, y equals f at x, at a specific value of the independent variable, for example, x equals a. And it's estimated using average rates of change for small intervals of the independent variable, very close to the value of a. For example, we use 0 0.001 as our value. And what that means is that we're going to use 0 0.001 as our smallest, our tiny interval. So can you imagine how small it is if you're going from 1 to 2, we're using a 0 0.001 interval. So very, very small interval to indicate the instantaneous rate of change. So, now, let's look at the next part. Preceding interval is an interval of the independent variable of the form a minus h and a. So that's your interval, where h is a small positive value used to determine an average rate of change. So preceding means we need to go 0 0.001 before the a value that you're looking for. The following interval is an interval of the independent variable of the form a to a plus h, where h is a small positive value used to determine an average rate of change. So here, what we're looking for an interval of h that is 0 0.001 after the value given a. The last one that we're looking at is the centered interval. A centered interval is an interval of the independent variable of the form a minus h to a plus h, where h is a small positive value used to determine the average rate of change. What that means is that we're looking 0 0.001 before and 0 0.001 after the given value a. Let's look at some examples to make this um, make you understand this better. So, an example determine the average rate of change of f at x is equal to some function at x equals 2. And we're going to use preceding interval to determine that. Preceding means we're going to use 2 and uh, 1.999 and 2. The reason why is that we want to find the value before the value 2 so that it represents a preceding interval. So the average rate of change is going to be f at 2 minus f at 1.999 and what we're going to do is plug it in. Now folks, you don't, as long as you show me this step right here, you will not have to show me the plug-in step. The pl Once you plug it into your calculator, the value you're going to be given is 4.997. So this is a very close approximation to 5. This number is very, very close to 5. Let's look at the next one, following interval. Well, following interval, we're going to use 2 and 2.001 because we're looking for a number following the given value. So the average rate of change of f at 2.001 minus f at 2, once you plug it in your calculator, will be 5.003. What is that approximately equal to? Well, folks, that's going to be approximately equal to 5 as well. So, interesting, preceding interval, which is the one we did here, gives us 5. Following interval gives us almost 5. Let's look at centered interval. Well, centered interval, will give, that's the points that we need, 1.999, so 0 0.001 before, and 0 0.001 after are the two interval values we're going to use. So you're going to plug it in. And what do you get? Well, don't forget that the denominator when you divide is going to be 0 0.002, folks. Well, that, funny enough, that gives us an exact value of 5. So let's note something. All three yielded approximately this exact same answer. So the rounded to the nearest number, they yielded a 5. So regardless of which one we use, we can determine the average rate of change whether it be for preceding, 
following or centered interval. Now, a difference quotient. This is a formula you're going to have to memorize. Difference quotient is basically used to determine the slope. The slope at a very, very small number where what we do is we take function a plus h minus f at a all over h. If you look at this and compare it to one of the three intervals that we looked at, you'll note that this is the following interval. So we're using the difference quotient is literally the following interval. And we use the difference quotient to calculate the instantaneous rate of change. So the I rock, okay? The instantaneous rate of change is used using a very, very small interval, say 0 0.001, and we use the difference quotient to calculate the instantaneous rate of change. All right, that's the end of this video, folks. On to the next one. Take care.